Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're in the Bavarian Alps chasing chamois with Irish stalker Jason Doyle. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. We're on the continent for a high altitude chamois hunt on the German-Austrian border. I was meant to be behind the rifle, but in a fit of kindness I've offered the gig to Jason Doyle while I take on camera duties. We can already spot chamois high on the peaks above us, but before any of that we've got the range test to take care of. Jason soon has the formalities complete, now we can suit up and head out. Well here we are in the start of our German chamois hunt and um, we've just crossed the border from Austria into Germany. These Alps are absolutely beautiful. Um, borrowing a rifle for this trip so just came to the shooting range. Already just before we set up we saw a couple of chamois high above us but um, with a borrowed rifle just wanted to get a couple of shots on target. So we've done that. Familiar kit for me with the Swarovski Z6 and um, using the normal 150 gram bullets and the 300 WSM, not a calibre I've used before, so I was keen to get a couple of shots on the target. It's fine, everything worked well. We fired at 140 metres, maybe an inch low, so we've 100, well, 100 metres zero, but should be no problem from now on. And no, looking forward to getting up there and giving it a go. Jason's clearly raring to go, but let's see how he feels after an upward pull in this challenging terrain. We have a long stretch of forestry to negotiate before we can even think about getting close to a chamois. It's going to be a long stalk. We've just climbed up for about 45 minutes or an hour. It's been a tough old climb up through the forestry and we've come out on the hill on top. You can see this big bowl at the back of us here. And this is supposedly a really good area for chamois. So we're going to sit, have something to eat, have a drink and give it an hour here. Just glass all this and there's a good chance one will come out of these trees. It's a good area for them. So we're just going to give it a while here and glass as hard as we can and hopefully we'll see something and then once we've spotted it we can organise a stock. Glassing the ground hard, it's not long before our attention is drawn to some likely looking specimens. There's just two bits of bad news. The first is there's a huge amount of ground to cover between us and them. The second is the arrival of an unwanted distraction. There's a female and a follower, a bit closer than the rest of the group. They're about 270 metres at the moment. We can't get any closer, we have these alpine cows just above us, we can hear the bells. And they've just decided to feed right into the area we want to go. So we don't want to show ourselves and spook them and have them run into the group. So we're going to have to go down and come up under the group, which is far from the ideal situation. I'd always rather come in on top of animals that you're hunting. We've been left with no choice now, we're going to have to go down and come underneath them. So, the chances of it working are probably pretty slim, but we've no other option. With time of the essence, Jason opts to ditch the camera crew for the stalk ahead, leaving me to film from afar as he tackles a treacherous climb. Pretty extreme, a bit more, a bit steeper than I thought, tougher. Um, really, really difficult to get in on the animal. Maybe hour and a half, two hours of tough hiking, more or less mountain climbing. I had to change my route a couple of times. While I concentrate my best efforts on filming the hunt, well mostly, Jason manages to make good progress. So we're nearly in position now. Shami are just over the edge from here. Hopefully you can see where we've come. I started out over there, those trees. I've come right along underneath this scree line here. It's taken me a good hour, but I'm just going to have a peek over this edge here, just through this tree, and this should be 100, 120 metres below me. Fingers crossed. 
As luck would have it, the chosen chamois is right where we expected. Jason makes his way carefully into range. Finding a good shooting position is another matter. Where I took the shot from wasn't ideal, but couldn't get closer. It's 168 meters off the edge of a cliff. Finally, this looks like the opportunity we've worked so hard for. Just as Jason gets comfortable, the chamois spot his silhouette over the skyline. Any second now they'll run for it, so Jason has no choice but to take a quick shot from a kneeling position. The shot beast stays on its feet and looks like it might run. Jason covers it, but then it drops just a few yards further on. There's a clear blood trail from the shot location and it only takes a few minutes to retrieve our quarry. Really happy, uh, great result. Nice to get my first chamois. And um, I was a little bit concerned when it ran, but they're notorious for being a tough animal, same as the Sika. But I was confident the shot was good. And with the, the nozzler bullet and the 300 WSM, she only went 10 yards. And with the stalk over, I managed to put in another appearance. So Jason, wide man's hail. Wide man's thank. Well this hunt started in Ireland and I met up with Pete in Manchester. We flew to Zurich and came into Austria and now we're just across the border in Germany hunting chamois, it's my first time. Had a go yesterday but we had to turn around and go back to our guide's house. The rain came in, I've never seen rain like it, as only you get in the Alps apparently. But this morning and today the weather's been fantastic. Um, we've had a super walk, it's a little bit warm for hunting and very warm for climbing mountains, but it's been an amazing hunt for me, um, pretty extreme. I really didn't expect anything like this. They're a fairly wise, fairly crafty animal. I, I wasn't expecting it. Um, they'd spotted us from five, 600 meters. But had a good, real good stock, maybe hour and 10, hour and 20 minutes to get in. And um, really exciting, as every stock is, as it builds from a distance. And not knowing the ground was challenging and had some, some tough walking to do, a couple of falls. There was five chamois in front of me. Um, three females and two youngsters. So I watched them for maybe 10-15 minutes until it was obvious which female had no baby. So she was the one to take. All in all, really successful hunt. And um, back to the back to the car now and then for a cold beer somewhere. Jason there, finally, finally, finally securing his chamois. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. There's another development in the battle between shooters and GPs, but Basque says it's a good thing. As of now, the police are contacting GPs to request information as soon as a firearm or shotgun licence application is received, instead of waiting until a certificate has been issued. Basque says this will help speed up applications, but at the same time warned that we should still refuse to pay any fees demanded by GPs for the initial police contact. You should only cough up any money if additional work is required on the GP's part. It's been a Paralympics of near misses so far for Great Britain. Stuart Nangle progressed to the final in the men's air pistol, but exited in sixth as China's Chao Yang took gold. Then in the pro air rifle on Saturday, Matt Scalhorn was just four tenths of a point off reaching the final. Later the same day, Ryan Cockbill was an agonising 0.1 short of making the standing air rifle final. There are still several British competitors left to shoot in Rio. You can help establish new records of wild boar populations in Scotland. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association, after talks with the SNH, has encouraged all its members to log wild boar sightings and cull records using an online tool. There's even an app for it. This will give a crucial snapshot of the wild boar population, which could be used to assess the best way to control numbers. Head to the SGA website for more info. The Countryside Alliance Awards are open for nominations once again. Known as the Rural Oscars, the awards look for the best local food and drink, village shop, farm enterprise and tourism enterprise in the British countryside. 
If you want to nominate your favourite rural business, head to the Countryside Alliance website now. And finally, we'll see you at the Midland Game Fair this weekend. Western Park is expected to be busier than ever for this year's fair and we'll be scouring the aisles getting the atmosphere and looking for breaking news. Don't forget to drop into the Sporting Rifle and Airgun Shooter stands for unbeatable subscription offers and the chance to win prizes. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.